All right, people. So the picture of health, Dan Raphael, is reporting here on Twitter. Wait for this. The WBA have stated that they will order Alexander Usyk to defend his WBA, IBF, and WBO World Heavyweight titles against Deontay Wilder next if Daniel Dubois is unavailable due to injury or he pulls out. The purse uh, bid, I should say, for Dubois versus Usyk is set for May 25th, which is next week. So in the ring, after his last fight against Kevin Lorraine, Daniel Dubois was saying he was injured. And then in the subsequent weeks after the fight, I think it was Shane McGuigan who said that he had an injury. God almighty, too, was, was it? I can't remember. But it was an injury nonetheless. But the nature of the injury that was being reported, I cannot remember for the life of me what it exactly was, was an injury where you probably wouldn't have saw Dubois walking around the ring and he was walking around no real problem after the fight. So... Look, we don't know what the, the situation there is, whether he is injured or not. He's obviously left Shane McGuigan and gone to Don Charles, which is a bit of a head-scratcher. Don't know why. But let's say, for argument's sake, he is still injured, or he does, in fact, pull out. Then they will install Deontay Wilder as the mandatory challenger. Now, look, two things come to mind when I think of this whole situation. I view this. One is, yes, I would like to see Wilder versus Usyk. I think it's a more competitive fight than Dubois because I think that Usyk Dubois is a case of man versus boy. I think Dubois will get completely just just t- ripped apart by Alexander Usyk, to be honest with you. Wilder, obviously, the, the will to win between Wilder and Dubois, it's night and day. I mean, Deontay Wilder, you really do have to strap this guy to the canvas to keep him down. You know, tremendous will that Deontay Wilder has, tremendous hunger for battle. I mean, question a lot of things about Wilder, but Jesus, you can't question the man's heart. He has a he has a massive fighting heart. So in terms of the heart department, he's night and day over Dubois. Uh it, it is a more interesting fight because I think that Wilder would go for it more than Dubois would. So it is a more interesting fight. But at the same time, Wilder has boxed one round since twenty twenty one. He fought Robert Helaney as last October, in which I don't believe was sold as any type of eliminator. I think it was just a normal run-of-the-mill fight. I don't even recall there being a title on the line. And now he could potentially be installed as the mandatory challenger. Despite the fact that he was meant to... Well, they wanted to do Ruiz versus Wilder for the WBC mandatory um, status. Didn't happen, you know, for whatever reason. Now... He could be in a situation where he gets named mandatory to fight Alexander Usyk, having fought one fight in a year that went around, and I don't believe there was even a WBA ranking title on the line of that fight. I mean, honestly, how in God's name they come up with these rankings is beyond me. I don't even recall it being sold as any type of eliminator. I think it was just a normal run-of-the-mill comeback fight for Deontay Wilder, and now he could find himself mandatory again you got to ask questions to these sanctioned bodies and say, what the hell is going on? I mean, the WBA and the WBC, the two of them are really just, the, they're the worst. Because when you see the rankings, especially the WBA, have some of the worst rankings you'll ever see. I mean, Daniel Dubois was able to get his crack at the WBA regular title by beating Bogdan Dinu, who at the time, 2021, was ranked number two by the WBA, when he'd had two fights in, I believe, two years against Journeyman, and he somehow found himself inexplicably number two in the WBA rankings. I mean, Anders on a postcard how that makes sense. It doesn't. And Deontay Wilder, haven't, have, he hasn't fought a WBA-sanctioned bout in, however, over the decade? And I don't recall there being any WBA, even a trick of title on the line against Robert Hellenius. So how the hell could he find himself mandatory? Seriously, that is an absolute joke if he does. At the same time, the, the, the boxing fan in me would be like, oh, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Alexander Rusek versus Deontay Wilder. And the question would be, would Deontay Wilder take it? You know, not that he'd be afraid of Alexander Rusek, but the fact of the matter is, I am pretty much convinced that he will get more money to fight Joshua in December with what the Saudis are offering because he'll have to take a percentage split and a less of a split against Alexander Usyk being the mandatory. And surely his team will be thinking, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Uh, Joshua in December, more money, more winnable fight. Let's have that and then see what happens after that. So we need to wait. It could be a good thing in, in one sense. If Dubois can't take it and Wilder say, decides, now I'll take the Joshua fight. 
well then that's one less mandatory maybe to worry about maybe they'll just order an eliminator between the next available contenders i don't know but that's a situation to be honest with you i'd rather see you sick I'd rather them call, look, if Fury's going to have an interim fight, and Usyk's going to have an interim fight, call the IBF mandatory, get that out of the way, Hurikovic versus Usyk, better fight, everyone's happy, I think Usyk wins, but a much better fight for Fury, whoever he's going to fight next, out of a lane, someone like that, probably, but let's, let's try and get that for Wilder. I would imagine his team are going to probably look at going down the Anthony Joshua road. I would imagine, I imagine you get more money fighting him in Saudi, and like, if he loses to Usyk, maybe the Saudis will still do it, but I I just don't think so, I mean, like, if they wouldn't want Joshua to fight in the, in the summer, surely they wouldn't want Usyk, or sorry, they wouldn't want Wilder to fight Usyk, if that could put in jeopardy the Joshua fight, I mean, obviously, if you lose to Usyk, it's not as bad as losing to, you know, whoever, Luis Ortiz just took a name out there, but still, they don't want, I don't want any of these guys going in there with now. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll leave it there, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. For now, lads and lassies, I'll leave you with that. Peace.